Thoroughbred Action is presented by Hardacre Farm. Welcome to Thoroughbred Action from Gulfstream Park. Happy Sunday. Let's get right to our track and weather conditions for today's races. It was a wet and rainy afternoon in South Florida for a Sunday card of racing with 10 races on the card. The main track sloppy, racing off the turf. First race of the afternoon off the turf at five furlongs over the main track. Claimers in for a price tag of 12,500. Scratch the two eighth on, scratch the four Colonel Red. Numbers three, five, and seven took a large amount of play. Racing at Gulfstream. From the inside, where's the bay gets the first call. Let's go, Ben, move to challenge. From the outside in Shere Khan, in between horses, Escapist, and the early trailer is Starship Mars. Now they run past the half-mile pole, and Starship Mars is run on to take a narrow lead. From the outside, Shere Khan is into second, where's the bay is now third. From fourth in between horses is Escapist, and now trailing is Let's Go, Ben. The outside pair hook up outside the three-eighths of a mile mark, and Starship Mars and Juarez lead narrowly. Shere Khan is up to even terms at the 5 16th. Here's a three-wide run from Escapist into third and up to challenge for the lead. Let's go, Ben is fourth and put to a drive and the trailer is Where's the Bay with a quarter of a mile left to go. They line up three across the course from the far outside Escapist. He has the momentum and he's up to take the lead now. Trying to fight on second is Shere Khan. Late run from Let's Go, Ben. Inside the funnel furlong, Escapist has the lead. Shere Khan, dead game down inside, but Escapist still has the lead. Shere Khan trying to get back on terms. Escapist will win it. Shere Khan second, Let's Go, Ben third, then Starship Mars. Time for the race. 58 and 1. Betters had the right three. The winner was the three, Escapist, who proved that his win on turf could be translated to the dirt as he kicks off the card with a victory under Tyler Gaff Leone. Robert Falcone Jr., the winning trainer for owner Robert Falcone. Seven Sheer Khan took over at the top of the stretch but had to settle for second ahead of the five Let's Go Ben, who finished third. To the second race now, it was a first finish line race and a mile and a 16th over the main track. Claimers in for a price tag of $6,250. A field of seven went postward. The favorite was the five, the Louisiana. Louisiana Invader in Avanti. And they're off. From the outside, Bama Bound is sent for speed, and Avanti comes away in the top flight in equilibrium from between that pair. So the outside three cross over and lead the way, and they run around the first turn. Away racing in fourth is Sir Sparky. He's much closer today ahead of Storm Warnings and High Quality Prince. An Olympic bid lumbers along last of all. He's dropped better than 15 off the lead. Around the first turn they go, and from the outside, Bama Bound now has the lead. Here's Inavanti, the favorite is on the attack while three wide. Down at the inside, that's Equilibrium third, followed by Sir Sparky, then Storm Warnings. Second last is High Quality Prince and Olympic Pit. He's a bit closer now as they race through the opening quarter in 23 and four. Down the back stretch they go. Bama Bound and Jorge Ruiz call the shots by a length and a quarter. And Avanti is three wide. Here's Sir Sparky. He's keyed up today. Sir Sparky has his mind on business early. He's a joint second now. Then on the outside the Storm Warnings. From the back in high quality prints and still trailing the field is Olympic bid as they race to the first finish line so there's less than half a mile to go. Up front, Bama Bound leads but here's C.J. McMahon on Inavanti who looms large on the outside second. Back to third is Equilibrium. The veteran Storm Warnings is given the green light by Jose Garcia. He's trying to rally from third, then high quality prints and Olympic bid from the back. After three quarters in 112 and four, they run into the short stretch. Bama Bound has a narrow lead. In Avanti is second, Olympic bid and high quality prints are next. Storm Warnings trying to go on with them, then back to equilibrium as they turn in. Still up front, Bama Bound has something in the tank, comes off the fence with the lead by two and a half. High quality prints is second, Olympic bid is charging hard. In Avanti has been defeated. It's high quality prints trying to get to the leader, Bama Bound, who has something in the tank, and Bama Bound, and Ruiz will go it all the way. Second is Olympic bid, third is high quality Prince, and then in Avanti. Seven to two winner of today's second race was number seven, Bama Bound, who resorts back to his old ways of showing speed and holding on when confronted. Jorge Ruiz rode the winner for Bruno Tesori and Baccarat Racing. Number one Olympic bid from a long way back, getting up for second ahead of the three high quality Prince, who ran third. We'll take a brief time out. When we come back, there's a lot of great racing action left. Don't go away. We have to take care of these horses that you know give us so much joy. Being accredited by the TAA gives us instant credibility. People trust us even more than they have before because they know that the TAA has been to all of our location and that our horses are well cared for. I mean, this farm wouldn't look the way it is. These horses wouldn't look the way they are if it wasn't for the generosity and the hard work of Thoroughbred Aftercare Alliance. They've united our whole industry in terms of the aftercare movement. We're all working together for the same purpose. 
Back now for the third race, five and a half furlongs over the main track. Maiden Claimers in for a price tag of $25,000. We had a field of six line up for this one. The favorites were one, John's Approval, and two, whoop de doo And they're off. Missing the start was that Mr. P. From the rail, that's John's approval who gets the first call. whoop de doo is up to challenge from second. Up on the yacht side, that's Family Crest third. Flying Rocket fourth. That Mr. P is fifth. And last and wide, the trailer is that Charlie. They make their way to the half-mile pole. John's approval passes the half-mile pole with a narrow lead. Up on the yacht side, whoop de doo is now second. Family Crest is third. That Mr. P fourth. That Charlie is fifth. And plummeting to trail is Flying Rocket. Around the far turn they go. The opening quarter was 22 and four. John's approval and jockey Nikki Figueroa have them strung out here at the 5 16th with the lead. Now at the quarter pole with the lead, John's approval. Looks like he wants to get out a little bit, but Figueroa has him straight enough as he turns in for the drive on a two-length lead. whoop de doo is second and coming after the leaders. Three lengths back to Family Crest third as they straighten in. John's approval settling the score with whoop de doo It's John's approval with a narrow lead. whoop de doo Up and on the outside, and now whoop de doo takes the lead. John's approval is back to second. Well clear, Family Crest third. whoop de doo in front. John's approval second, third family crest, fourth was Flying Rocket. Number two, whoop de doo makes his first start off an extended vacation and does it in winning fashion under Miguel Vasquez as he wears down the leader inside the final furlong. George Kerr, the winning owner, David Braddy, the winning conditioner. Number one, John's approval beat himself while second ahead of number four family crest, who ended up third. To the fourth race now, six furlongs over the main track, an allowance optional claimer with a field of six. Strong field assembled here. The betting favorite on the rail, stakes placed, French Quarter. And they're off. From the inside, Richard the Great and French Quarter, the first two to begin from the returning Ranger in Paradise, who comes away racing in third. Prudhoe Bay is fourth ahead of Grand Billy, and the early trailer is a bounding legacy. The top two hook up. It's French Quarter to the inside, Richard the Great to the outside. Their heads apart, working a length and a half clear of Ranger in Paradise, who's in a good spot third. Two clear of Grand Billy in fourth, followed by Prudhoe Bay and a bounding legacy. Inside half a mile away, they swing around the far turn after the opening quarter in 22 and two. French Quarter on the inside, Richard the Great on the outside. They've been at each other's throats since they sprung it, working two better than Ranger and Paradise. Here's a bounding legacy drawing closer, fourth, only four lengths behind, ahead of Grand Billy, who's ridden hard and not responding yet, and trailing the field is Prudhoe Bay with a quarter of a mile left to go. The whip is out on Richard the Great. At this point, he is sticking with French Quarter. They're two better than a bounding legacy who has inside position. 45 and one for the opening half mile. French Quarter has the lead. He'll have to look out for a bounding legacy who's up the inside. Ranger in paradise on the outside in deep stretch they're swarming in on french quarter a bounding legacy kicks through on the rail french quarter a bounding legacy a bounding legacy and the final strides under panici to get it in one ten and two fast paced in today's fourth race set it up for a horse rallying from well off the speed it was five a bounding legacy who kicked up the inside to get the head bob in the concluding stages under luca panici for trainer ralph nix and owners run hard stables and phs racing one French quarter second, two Richard the Great. He ran very well on the comeback try. He ended up third. To the fifth race we go now, off the turf, main track at one mile. Scratch the two, Stella Street, five Fashion Factor, nine, 10, and 11. And a rider change on 13, Miss Contessa to Tyler Gaffleone. Her favorite was the six, Sistine Sista. And they're off. From the center, Sistine Sista gets the first call, moving quickly to challenge is Flashy Val, and Flashy Val and Sistine Sista go one, two. Quebec is down toward the inside and makes it a party as these three are now across the course, two in front of Kenitra. Then out wide goes Yankee Perfection. Stretch of two and a half to Miss Jackson ahead of Miss Contessa, and at the back, the trailer, Bitacora. They run out of the chute and up front. Flashy Val leads through the opening quarter in a spirited 23 and two. Sistine Sisters on the chase second. Down at the inside, Quebec is third. Yankee Perfection is fourth, working three ahead of Kenitra, followed by Miss Condessa, who's out wide. And then it's a stretch of another four to Bitacora and Miss Jackson. 
They make their way past the half mile pole now. And up front, Flashy Val leads by a neck. Sistine Sista alongside second through a 47 and one half mile. Yanking Perfection is tacking on to be third ahead of Quebec, who's now backpedaling. And so is Flashy Val. Meanwhile, Bitacora moving sharply for Alvarado Jr. In between horses, he had to tap on the brakes while trying to work to the outside as Quebec now moves up to challenge for the lead, less than five sixteenths away. Quebec has the lead on the outside, and Sistine Sisters right back at her. Bitacora is back running again. Now Alvarado will try to get to the outside again. This time he does. Oh, Bitacora, the one to recognize after three quarters and one twelve and four. Sistine Sister has the lead over the top, and Bitacora from between horses. It's Quebec. These three. Bitacora now doing the better work, and she'll take the lead. Bitacora and Roberto Alvarado Jr. kicking clear. Bitacora going away. Sistine Sister is going to outrun Quebec for second. Miss Jackson gets fourth ahead of Yankee Perfection on 38 and 1. Number seven, Bitacora looked like the horse you wanted to be on at the three furlong point, but Alvarado Jr. needed to find racing room. He got stopped the first time he tried to make a move, but he got her outside turning for home, and she did the rest. She kicked on for the easy victory for Magic Stables and trainer Francisco D'Angelo. Number six, Sistine Sista did very well to outfinish number one, Quebec for the second position. Quebec ended up third. Time to take a time out. When we come back, we'll bring you the late pick five right after this. A passion for horses and a commitment to breed champions is the foundation of Hardacre Farm. Founded in 1999 by Amy Tarrant, owner, breeder, and trainer, Hardacre Farm, now based in Ocala, continues its tradition of success. From the Breeders' Cup to Gulfstream Park, Hardacre Farm, from the breeding shed to the racetrack, in pursuit of producing the best. Back now for race number six, the start of the late pick five, six furlongs over the main track, three-year-old fillies of the state bred variety. We had a rider change here on one Valiant Princess to Carlos Montalvo, scratch number three, Kitzel Park. A field of seven went postward. The favorite was the five. Who's calling? And they're off. From the outside, that's Liza Starr and True Motion, who both begin nicely. Who's Calling moves to be third. Two back to Valiant Princess in fourth, followed by Sophie Salsa. And the two at the back are My Little Cruz and Blakely's Smile. Down the back stretch they go. And up front, the leader is True Motion by an act. Right back at her on the inside. And who's calling from second? A length and a half to Liza Star. Third. Two back to Sophie Salsa. Tacking on fourth ahead of Valiant Princess. Fifth and in range for Montaldo. About five lengths behind through a 22 and three opening quarter. The top light horses have opened a big margin up between themselves and the two trailers. Blakely Smile and My Little Cruz. Around the floor turn, less than five sixteenths away. And up top, the leader still True Motion. In fact, True Motion has widened to a three-length lead now. Valiant Princess splits horses into second. Who's calling is an all-in third from the outside and lies the star as they straighten in. Here's a big run coming today from True Motion. True Motion on the board at eight to one, and she is long gone. True Motion through a 46 and one opening half mile has them put away. True Motion and Marcos Manessis wrapped up in the end and eight or nine in front. Valiant Princess second, third was Who's Calling, fourth, Blakely Smile from a long way out of it, then Liza Star and Sophie Salsa in 111 and two. Number six, True Motion bet down from a 20 to one morning line, sent off at eight to one. Her debut run last time was in the slop. She took no part today. She shows a lot more speed and a lot more stamina. She impresses in victory under Marcos Manessis, her trainer Luis Duco and owner Alan Benning. One Valiant Princess second ahead of five, Who's Calling, who was just best of the rest, while third. To the seventh race now, the start of the late pick four, seven furlongs over the main track. Claimers in for a price tag of $6,250. Made a field of eight line up for this one. The favorites were one, Sailor's Companion, and three, Always Dude. And they're off. From the center, that's Dreaming of DeWild who begins nicely. Here's Always Dude moving up from the inside. And Always Dude quickly now takes charge of the race and leads it by two and a half. Bonnie Boy Hunter is a joint second alongside Dreamin' of DeWild. Out wide on the course is Thunder of Fleet alongside Bank on John, improving out the rail as Sailor's Companion. The two at the back are High Dandy and Simon the Serenian. Down the back stretch they go and go to the half mile mark. And always dude, out where he wants to be, two and a half on top. Sailor's Companion is second. Dreamin' of DeWild is third. Bonnie Boy Hunter is fourth. Back fifth and five lengths off the lead is Bank on John. Moving on his outside is Thunder of Fleet. And the two at the back, Simon the Serenian and the trailer continues to be 
The trailer is Thunder of Fleet. Around the far turn they go. They went 23 and 3 for the opening quarter. And Always Dude leads it by two and a half. Bonnie Boy Hunter taking up the slack second. The whip is out on Sailor's Companion third. High Dandy from the outside fourth. Then Bank on John. Thunder of Fleet dropping back. Dreaming of DeWild. And then Simon the Serenian. 47 seconds for the opening half mile. Up top, Jaramillo goes to work on Always Dude. Tries to find off the challenge from Bonnie Boy Hunter. But Bonnie Boy Hunter runs past. And Bonnie Boy Hunter now stretches the lead to three. Always Dude is second. High Dandy is third. On the outside, and a late run from Simon the Serenian. But the upset is on. Bonnie Boy Hunter wins. And wins it by four in the end. Close for second. Always Dude might have outdone Simon the Serenian. Then bank on John and High Dandy in 125 flat. Minor upset in today's seventh race. It was the gray Bonnie Boy Hunter who drew away for the victory, giving Luca Panici his second winner of the afternoon. Owned by Mary Hunter and Maurice Miller, Mickey Kroger trained the son of active duty, who was off at 4-1. to To the eighth race now, the eighth race at the start of the late pick three, an allowance optional claiming event. Phillies and mares of the state bred variety sprint for a purse of $37,000. Scratch the five did not mean it. It's a field of eight. Wide open betting race. The lukewarm choice was number six, Sweet Medea. And they're off. Level beginning. From the outside, Talisa begins the best. Here's first distinction quickly up the challenge and take over from the rail. From the far outside, Flashjack showing speed today. Awesome Dame is away racing fourth. Followed outside by competitive player. Then it's Sweetwater. Two back to Sweet Medea, who's second last. And the gray image of Rachel trails the field of eight as they go past the half mile pole. Up front, the leader is first distinction by a length. Up on the outside, Flashjack second, Talisa third. Awesome Dame is fourth. Fifth is competitive player. Here's a three rod move from Sweet Medea moving up on the outside, a length back to Sweetwater and trailing his image of Rachel. Around the far turn they go. There's five sixteenths left to go. Up on the outside, Flashjack traveling strongly today. She's up to take the lead from First Distinction, who politely bows out. Wide on the course is Sweet Medea from between horses. It's Talisa on the far outside and trying to kickstart a rally competitive player as they swing in. Up front, the leader, Flashjack, who gets away by three and a half. From the grandstand side, image of Rachel is showing up late. Also right there, Sweet Medea with Awesome Dame. But Flashjack's kicked it into another gear. It's Flashjack and Nikki. Figueroa at 12 to 1. They won it by three in the end. Another long shot image of Rachel gallops up for second. Talisa was third. Sweet Medea finished fourth at 111 flat. Number nine, Flashjack appeared to have her mind on business early in the race as she was much closer than she had been her last couple. She proved that she loves the golf track going and she wins easily under Nikki Figueroa for Audubon Racing and trainer Rohan Crichton. Number two, image of Rachel was last early but rallied wide to get up for second ahead of the seven, Talisa, who finished third. We'll take a brief time out. When we come back, we'll bring you the Late Daily Double, the Sunday feature, right after this. Crossing the finish line for the last time can mean an uncertain future for many horses. Recognizing the need for a dignified retirement, the racing industry has made racehorse aftercare a top priority. In partnership with Gulfstream Park and the Florida Horsemen's Association, Florida Track provides retraining and adoption services for retired racehorses. Thanks to their efforts, the end of a racing career can signal the beginning of a new career. In show jumping, trail riding, police work, even therapy for children and veterans. However, good intentions do not come without cost. As a nonprofit organization, Florida Track relies on tax-deductible donations and volunteers to help pay for feed, training, housing, and veterinary care. To find out how you can help, contact Florida Track today. Your support will go a long way towards a new beginning. Back now for the ninth race. It was the Sunday feature on Allowance Optional Claiming Event at One Mile. A field of eight went to the gate with no program changes. The favorite was on the rail, number one, Adirondack King. And they're off. 
The favorite Adirondack King threw his head at the start, but he didn't cost himself any momentum. In fact, Nick Juarez is after him to show some early speed. Encryption is away well from the top shelf, and he's in front. Moke works between horses as they run out of the chute. Three horses across the course. On the outside, it's Encryption. Down at the inside, Adirondack King. In between horses, he's in front, takes back to run third. Then Conquest Big E. High Kodiak Warrior is three wide. Aces for John. Improves to be third last. Duff is second last, and Joshua's comprise is the trailer as the favorites are 1-2. Adirondack King leads at the inside by a neck. Up on the outside, it's Encryption second. Conquest Big E runs into a pocket to be third, bracketed by He's in front, who's fourth. Two and a half lengths clear of High Kodiak Warrior, then aces for John. Duff is asked to quicken while losing ground, and Joshua's comprise is not in touch as they run to the far turn. The opening quarter was 23-4. and four. They picked it up in the second quarter as they went 46-2 and two to the opening half mile. At even money, it's Nick Juarez and Adirondack King Less than five sixteenths from home, surrounded by Encryption, and he's in front. And now Encryption takes the lead. Adirondack King will have to counterpunch from second. From the outside, it's he's in front third. Running on from the back is Duff, although he did just have to tap on the brakes as they turn in. He's in front is now trying to get to Encryption, who took the lead. There's an eighth of a mile to go, and Encryption has the lead by a length and a half. Flat to the boards in second is he's in front. Four clear of Adirondack King, who's challenging for third with Conquest Big E and Duff. But but Encryption's clear to the finish. Encryption and Tyler Gaffleon by a length and a half. He's in front second, well clear of Duff third, then Conquest Big E. Adirondack King disappoints and runs fifth at 136. Flat. Number one, Adirondack King, and number seven, Encryption, had raced each other before. It, they were tied one apiece. Now it's one in favor of Encryption who gets the victory today under jockey Tyler Gaffleon for Stoneway Farm and trainer Kelly Breen. His second start off the layoff is a winning one. Number four, he's in front, did well to be second. That's number one, Adirondack King, backed up to finish fifth. On to the tenth race. Now it's off the turf. It's on the main track at seven furlongs. Take note of the distance change here. Marcos Manessis on two, Love Totem. Scratch the eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, a field of seven. The favorite was the seven, Big Darling. And runners away. Good start out wide for Big Darling. Moving up at the inside, that's Betty Blue to show speed. Sent between horses, Love Totem. Manessis is intent on getting Love Totem as close to the lead as possible. And now Love Totem puts ahead in front. Big Darling right back at her second. Betty Blue is at the rail. Moving wide on the course is Roland Rose. She's now only a two lengths off the lead. Then back to Jose Garcia and Miss Sugar. I cry when I'm drunk is second last. And four clear of the trailer, still beautiful as they race to the half mile pole. Up front, it's a contested early pace with Big Darling duking it out with Love Totem. They're in lockstep past the half mile, working a length and a half in front of Roland Rose. Down at the inside, Miss Sugar is now fourth. From fifth, I cry when I'm drunk. We'll have to make up five lengths and less than three furlongs. Second last and dropping anchor is Betty Blue, and still beautiful has trailed throughout with three-eighths of a mile to go. Now five-sixteenths to go, and Edgar Zayas and Big Darling get away. They've opened a six-length lead now. Miss Sugar is second, the only one running on at all from behind as I cry when I'm drunk. She'll try to complete a formful exacto with a quarter of a mile left to go. Off the turn with Big Darling to catch. In front by five, Miss Sugar still races in second. I cry when I'm drunk is third. Back fourth is still beautiful with an eighth of a mile to go. Big Darling just posing for the picture. Big Darling and Edgar Zayas have fled the scene. They're in front by 10 and still moving away. It's going to be I cry when I'm drunk who's going to grind it out to get second ahead of Big Sugar or Miss Sugar who finishes third. Still beautiful. Fourth and fifth is Love Totem at 128 and three. Number seven, Big Darling takes care of business. In fact, she makes short work of it in today's final race, winning easily without ever being asked for her best. Edgar Zayas atop the daughter of Big Drama for Joe Katniss III and owner George Dorothy Rafa. Number three, I Cry When I'm Drunk, completes a formful exact to second ahead of five, Miss Sugar, who ran third. Six, no beautiful fourth, and Love Totem completes the high five. The late pick five, seven thousand three hundred seven dollars and sixty cents. Twenty cent rainbow six, twelve thousand six hundred seventeen dollars fifty cents. That triggers a carryover. Wednesday carryover now stands at ninety three thousand eight hundred eighty three dollars and fifty nine cents. That wraps up today. We're dark for live racing over the next couple of days, but we'll see you back here on Wednesday. And our first post will be twelve fifty five p.m. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. I've been working all day.